Hello everyone, happy evening, a very good evening. I hope and I believe all of you are doing well. A quick nod whether the audio visual is all good so that we can start with this session of NF100 episode 66. Hello, hi, hi Priya, Shazeb, Shwetalana and Kaushik, Siddhi, Tablish, Manali, everyone here, a very good evening. I hope the audio visual is all good and I think we are meeting after a long time on the Unacademy Need PG YouTube channel and we have very, very important high yield session for the day that is a body fluid compartments and its measurements. So this is important for everyone right from the first year of MBBS to anybody who is appearing for NEET PG, FMG or INICT as well. So in this session what is different is basically we are going to discuss the easy tricks. This is a very very important topic, a basic topic but a bit of confusing. So we will try to memorize it with some easy tricks and let's start with this session. Now what is the plan for the rest of the days of this month? Uh, like we had one KBMD episode yesterday, the top 10 mnemonics mixed back. We will have the rest of the KBMDs also like uh, in on consecutive days starting tomorrow 28, 29 and 30th of June. 12 p.m. every day we will have KBMD sessions for the rest of the three days. These are free live classes which will happen on the uh, Unacademy app and you can use the code Dr. Nikita basically to join for the class. So I'll see you at 12 p.m. tomorrow for another KBMD uh, episode. Sometimes it's going to be mnemonics and sometimes it's going to be fast five clinical questions. All right. And uh, yes, uh, before I forget, let me also tell you about the 20% of uh, offer that we have running on the platform, which is valid for the last days of this month. That is till 30th June only and you can use the code Dr. Niketa to get additional discount while you are subscribing. So routinely you get 10% off but now till 30th of June we have this offer of 20% off on all the subscriptions that you take on the platform. All right. And what are the batches that are starting? Basically, we have NEET PG 23 batch which is going on and it's a subject wise detailed discussion batch. You will have the first uh, theory discussion and then we will have the revision also in the last three months. We are also starting with the test and discussion batch, another batch on July 1st, uh, especially like the test and discussion batch is going to be very, very helpful for those who have already given an attempt before. All right. So, uh, these were the important updates. Another important update that the prices of Iconic subscription are increasing soon. Iconic is basically an academy and prep ladder together. So if you are planning to take Iconic subscriptions, make sure you do it at the earliest and you can additionally get 10% as I said by using the code Dr. Nikita. All right. So yes, tomorrow it is a KBMD. Okay, tomorrow we will have KBMD at 12 p.m. Like I said, the rest of the three days we'll have KBMDs coming up. Okay. Now, uh, the various subscriptions that are available on the platform, let me quickly brief you about that. We have the plus subscription, that is an academy. You'll have the live classes, you'll have the test series, you'll have the question bank, everything. Iconic is with prep ladder. Then you have the light subscription, which is basically only for the test series part. If you only want to practice the questions, we also have separate uh, MBBS Prof. 1 subscription and we have UPSC CMS, the combined medical services exam that is there. We have a separate subscription for that as well. All right. And... Um, uh, no, Leo Mukesh, we don't have that facility where you can subscribe only to an individual educator. But whenever you subscribe, you get access to all the courses, all the educators on the platform. All right. Okay, let's uh, start uh, basically with our discussion of the today's topic. The first question before we start, tell me that if you have a man, a patient weighing 70 kgs, how much would be the total body water? How much would be the ECF and how much would be the ICF in this patient? How much would be extracellular? How much would be intracellular fluid uh, quantity in this patient? Okay. 
Yes, absolutely right. So we have the 60, 40, 20 rule. But what is the 60, 40, 20? What is 60? What is 40? And what is 20? Uh, very good, Hashir. So um, basically, remember, as rightly mentioned, we have the 60, 40, 20 rule but what is 60 60 is basically 40 plus 20 that is the total body water is 60 percent of the body weight so for 70 kg percent 60 percent is 42 so it's going to be 42 liters which is the total body water what is 40 and what is 20? This is generally we tend to get confused whether 40 is ECF or 40 is uh, ICF. So remember the mnemonic that is basically TIE. Okay, you can remember it as TIE that is 60, 40 and 20. So ICF is in more quantity as compared to ECF. ICF is 40%, ECF is 20%. Okay, so remember the mnemonic that is TIE. Do you guys remember if you have attended the previous classes, where else have we seen this mnemonic of tie? Where else have we seen this mnemonic of tie? Nahi, nahi. I koi pile well ni daliye. I pata nahi kya kya aaz aariye. Tie is another mnemonic. Remember, it is the mnemonic for Viscott Aldrich syndrome, right? What is the triad of symptoms in Viscott Aldrich syndrome? That is tie. What does tie stand for? It is basically thrombocytopenia. Then we have infections and then we have eczema, right? This is the triad of Viscott Aldrich syndrome. Absolutely right. Indraja and Nanda, right? And this is the mnemonic for 60, 40, 20, okay? So remember ECF is basically going to be 20%. So 70 ka 20 that is 14 liters and this is 40 that means it is going to be 28 liters. Everybody clear with this? So remember that's a 60, 40, 20 rule and the mnemonic is tie. Okay, the mnemonic is tie. 60, 40, 20 total ICF and ECF. Okay. Now, this is basically the distribution of water in the various compartments. So, as we said, total body water will be 0.6, that is 60% of the body weight. So, in a 70 kg man, it's going to be 42 liters. Out of that, ICF will be more. This is going to be 40% and this is going to be 20%. So, basically, you see that ICF will be double the ECF. Okay, it's two-third of the total body water. And ECF is one-third of the total body water, right? So, this is 28 liters. This is 14 liters. Now, even in ECF, so basically, we have the cells, okay? And we have water within the cells that the intracellular fluid. Then we have the extracellular fluid which basically includes the plasma and also the interstitial fluid. Okay? And uh, after uh, and also the interstitial fluid. So basically in ECF we have the plasma and the interstitial fluid and a small quantity of transcellular fluid, mesenchymal fluid, all of that. Now how do you remember that in ECF which is in more quantity? Is it the interstitial fluid which is in more quantity, right? Is it the interstitial fluid which is in more quantity or is it the plasma which is in more quantity? So, remember the trick here is I is present in increased quantity, okay? That's another mnemonic to be remembered. So, I is present in increased quantity. So, remember interstitial fluid is more than plasma. Similarly, ICF is more than ECF, okay? Everywhere I, intracellular fluid, interstitial fluid is more than the respective counterpart. So, interstitial is more than plasma, ICF is more than ECF. How much more is interstitial as compared to plasma? Basically, it is three times. You can see plasma is one-fourth of ECF. Interstitial fluid is the rest, that is three-fourth. Basically, it is three times the plasma volume. Okay, it is three times the plasma volume. So, here you have three-fourth and one-fourth. Here you have two-third and one-third. Okay, two-third and one-third. All right, let's have a look at another image to reinforce what did we learn. So, we have total body water, the entire water in the body, which is basically intracellular within the cells and outside the cells. Intracellular is increased quantity, 
that is two third extra cellular is one third in the ecf then we have the plasma volume and we have the interstitial it is interstitial which is present in more quantity it is three fourth of extra cellular fluid plasma is one fourth of extra cellular fluid okay plasma is one fourth of extra cellular fluid all right everybody clear so you have icf you have interstitial fluid and you have the plasma okay and you have the plasma now let's try solving this question let me see how much of the topic whatever we have discussed so far have you understood plasma is how much of the total body water let's see who gets it right the first what do you think would be the answer to this one plasma is how much quantity of the total body water Hmm, very good. Absolutely right. Uh, Hashir, Shakil, uh, Tabish and Mansi, it's not A. The correct answer, yes, Saloni, the correct answer is D. It is 112th. So, what is the trap basically here in this question? Okay, what is the trap in the question? The trap in the question is the question is asking the fraction of the total body water. If the question was plasma is how much of the ECF, okay, plasma is how much of the ECF, then the answer is one fourth. But the question is it is how much of the total body water, it is one fourth of ECF and ECF is how much of the total body water. It is one third of the total body water. So one by four into one by three. So basically it is one twelfth of the total body water. Is this clear with everyone? Right. So this is where the trap is and this is where we tend to make mistakes in MCQs. That's why I always say that practice MCQs so that you know how the traps can be laid in the exam. Okay. So remember that plasma is one fourth of the ECF. Okay, plasma is one fourth of the ECF. That means it is one twelfth of the total body water. Okay. Next one. What do you think will be answer to this? Now everybody should get this one right. Interstitial fluid is how much of the total body water? What do you think will be answer to this? Absolutely right. Uh, Saloni, Shwetalena, correct. See, interstitial fluid, right. The interstitial fluid is how much of the ECF? It is three-fourth of the ECF, right? Three-fourth of the ECF and ECF is one-third of the total body water. So, three-three cancel. So, basically, it is going to be one-fourth. Okay, so the answer will be A. Everybody is clear with this? The answer will be A. It is three-fourth of the ECF and one-fourth of the total body water. Okay, one-fourth of the total body water. All right. Let's try solving this question. Tell me what will be the answer to this. The percentage of total body water is highest in which of the following? Is it adult males? Is it adult females? Is it newborn? Or basically all of them have this equal total body water percentage. Everybody has 60% or basically it changes. What do you think is the answer to this one? Okay, who's getting this right? I can see. Absolutely right. Okay, absolutely right. Uh, Kajal, it is, uh, it is newborn. Okay, the percentage of total body water is highest in the newborn. As the age increases, okay, as the age increases, the total body water percentage decreases. Now, remember the point here that even though newborns, infants, kids, basically they have more percentage of total body water, but quantitatively the quantity is less and that is why they are more prone to dehydration, developing dehydration rapidly and severely. Though the percentage is more, but the quantity is less. That is why dehydration we see more common in kids, right? So, remember with age, the percentage decreases. Now, amongst adult males and adult females, who has more water? Amongst adult males and adult females, who has more water? 
it is adult males which is more than the females okay males is more than the females so basically remember this point that the percentage of total body water is highest in newborns and in adult males it is lowest in the adult females it is said that females have more adipose tissue so adults with a large uh, adipose tissue basically will have less water ja adipose tissue jada hai wahan pani kam hai theek hai okay now this was about the distribution give me a quick thumbs up if everybody is clear basically the main point to be remembered is your mnemonic that is tai that is 60 40 20 rule i is present in the increased quantity that is icf is more than ecf and interstitial fluid is more than plasma okay interstitial fluid is more than plasma everybody is clear with this let's go to the next part the discussion of the next part of the session that is the measurement again very very important now how to be measure the quantity of these various fluid compartments is basically by giving a substance which will localize to that compartment so let's say if you want to measure the ecf volume so we give a substance we inject a substance which will stay in the ecf only and based on how much is the plasma concentration okay based on how much is the plasma concentration we calculate you know how it's the ecf volume wait till the end because we are going to solve the uh, numerical also on this a numerical has been asked in the recent exam so it's important okay so tell me first what will be the answer to this what is the most accurate method of measuring volume of ecf is it by using a mannitol is it inulin is it sucrose is it sodium thiosulfate it is evans blue what is the most accurate method of measuring the volume of ecf very good hasher absolutely right it is inulin okay remember inulin is the most accurate method inulin is the most accurate uh, evans blue not evans blue what is evans blue used for is it used for measuring the ecf i'll tell you the trick to remember imagine the blue plasma tv okay look at this image here so this is a plasma tv and imagine the blue screen so basically remember that evans blue is for measuring the plasma volume okay it's a blue plasma tv so remember blue is for evans blue is for measuring the plasma okay evans blue is for measuring the plasma not ecf so blue is for plasma volume what else can we use for measuring the plasma now whenever we say plasma the other word that comes with plasma is plasma proteins okay the other word is plasma proteins so we will use proteins what protein most common in plasma albumin so basically we can tag albumin with radio iodine iodine 125 right so albumin radio labeled albumin is again used for plasma because albumin is present in plasma theek hai next one rbc volume thinking logically when you want to measure the rbc volume we will tag rbc what is rbc tagged with 51 chromium 32 phosphorus iron this is what it is tagged with ecf is something which is very very important what is the major cation in ecf it is sodium right it is sodium so combine sodium with thiosulfate or thiocyanate this will be used for ecf right so sodium thiosulfate sodium thiocyanate sodium this is basically for ecf now the other things which stay in the ecf the ones which do not penetrate that is your mannitol sucrose and inulin right inulin is the best so remember all of this like mannitol sucrose inulin these are the saccharides which do not go into the cell so they measure the ecf volume okay they measure the ecf volume next one total body water when you are measuring water so you will use water wale compounds yani h2o ke jagah you write it as d2o or t2o that is d2o or tritium that is t2o right you can also use antipyrin okay remember antipyrin when i write antipyrin 
पायरेन इज लाइक पानी ओके पायरेन इज लाइक पानी दैट इज टोटल बॉडी वॉटर सो रिमेंबर दिस इज यूज फॉर टोटल बॉडी वॉटर एंटी पायरेन डी टू ओ एंटी टू ओ ओके ना द रेस्ट ऑफ द टू दैट इज द इंटरस्टिशियल फ्लूड एंड द आई सी एफ रिमेंबर आई एंड आई which are present in increased quantity they cannot be measured directly they are measured indirectly so interstitial fluid intracellular fluid i n i n these are measured indirectly okay these are measured indirectly so thinking logically when you want to measure the icf how can you measure total body water mein se ecf nikal do that will give the icf right total body water minus ecf interstitial fluid basically from the ecf remember uh, uh, minus the plasma volume it will give the interstitial fluid okay so what did we learn here basically for measuring the fluids okay for measuring the various fluid compartments in the total body water the compartment we have is ecf and icf ecf again is divided into plasma and the interstitial fluid right so for total body water water is d2o t2o or it is antipyrin right pani wala ecf is inulin mannitol sucrose sodium thiosulfate sodium thiocyanate icf is indirect measurement total body water minus ecf plasma blue plasma tv so imans evans blue plasma protein so protein that is albumin labeled with iodine interstitial fluid again is measured indirectly it is ecf minus the plasma okay ecf minus the plasma all right now uh, let's have a look at this question suppose you have read this topic and but you get this question in the exam risa is used for the measurement of what do you think will be answer to this is it total body water is it ecf is it plasma or it is basically for icf what do you think will be answer to this risa is used for the measurement of this is how you will take a logical guess in the exam you have read the topic but suddenly you see this question and you think oh my god i did not read this i read all the indicators but i did not read this what do you think will be answer how will you take a logical guess here yes absolutely right salone and hasher the correct answer is c what does risa stand for basically what does risa stand for so basically risa is radio iodine labeled serum albumin okay basically this is radio iodine labeled serum albumin this is albumin that is plasma protein so this is used for the measurement of plasma okay this is used for the measurement of plasma this is how we'll take a guess ki risa matlab this is serum albumin albumin is plasma protein so it's used for plasma okay all right what do you think will be the answer to this one this is another applied question of the theory that you have read which of the following substances or combinations of substances could be used to measure the interstitial fluid volume so what do you want to measure here the interstitial fluid volume point number 1 the interstitial fluid volume i i i n this is measured indirectly it cannot be measured directly so nothing alone mannitol alone d2o alone evans blue alone will not be enough interstitial fluid is basically your ecf right it's a ecf minus the plasma so for ecf we will use inulin for plasma we will use albumin so that is why the correct answer is inulin and the radioactive albumin inulin and d2o this will be used for measurement of icf the intracellular fluid right total body water this will measure the total body water this will measure the ecf minus this this will become the icf right so option d is for icf 
Option E is basically inulin is for ECF and this is for plasma, ECF minus plasma that gives the interstitial fluid, right? That gives the interstitial fluid, all right? So that was about this question. Now, this is the numerical that I was talking about. Do some calculations, do some mathematics uh, late night and tell me what do you think will be answered to this one? What do you think will be answered to this one? Even though you hate something or someone, but there would be things, there would be people like this, no matter how much you hate, you need to face them, right? You cannot escape. Waiting for the correct answer, I don't, uh, I don't see anybody getting the right answer so far. Yes, very good, Tabish. Absolutely right. The correct answer here would be 15 liters. Okay, it would be uh, 15 liters. So, let's understand this question. This is not very difficult. Let's understand this. Basically, this is based on the concept in general pharmacology that you must have read. That is the volume of distribution, right? We have read the concept of volume of distribution. What is the formula that relates your volume of distribution and the loading dose? What is the mnemonic for that? It is LVP, right? It is LV Prasad Institute, right? The LVP, that is LV Prasad Institute. So, loading dose is equals to volume of distribution into the plasma concentration, right? That is the plasma concentration. We want to measure the volume here. So, what is the formula for volume of distribution? It is loading dose upon the plasma concentration. So, based on the same concept, basically when you want to measure the volume of distribution of this substance, what substance it is? It is mannitol. What is mannitol used for? It is used for measuring the ECF. That is why ECF has been asked here, right? It's used for measuring the ECF. So, the volume of distribution of mannitol will basically give the ECF. But here, what do we need to change in the formula here is the amount that we take here, the loading dose, we need to minus whatever has been excreted or metabolized by the body, right? Basically, what's the formula? Volume is equals to amount upon concentration. It's the same like your volume of distribution is equals to loading dose upon the plasma concentration. But the difference here is the amount is taken as A1 minus A2. A1 is how much amount has been injected minus how much has gone out of the body. The amount of indicator removed by excretion or metabolism, right? So, let's try solving this numerical here. A patient is injected with 500 milligram of mannitol. So, that's basically your A1 is 500 milligram. After a two hour equilibration period, the concentration, plasma concentration is basically 3 milligram per 100 ml, right? It's 3 milligram per 100 ml. During this period, 10% is excreted. So, how much is the excreted A2? 10% of 500, that is 50 milligram. Okay, that is 50 milligram. So, how much is the volume? A1 minus A2, 500 minus 50, that is 450 upon the plasma concentration that is 3 milligram per 100 ml okay basically it is 3 milligram per 100 ml we can take this as 30 milligram per liters right so cancel this 45 divided by 3 it becomes 15 right it becomes 15 you can do such calculations even like using mental mathematics key 500 minus 50 is 450 45 divided by 3 it will be 15 right it's gonna be 15 liters this is how you'll do the calculation just remember the formula the same like lvp but minus your 
uh, the amount that has been excreted okay so that was the calculation that we need to know here very very important right this is asked in the exam okay this is asked in the exam all right okay and this is the last formula that i want you to remember because uh, many times plasma volume from plasma volume you have to calculate the total blood volume remember the formula is total blood volume is basically plasma volume upon 1 minus hematocrit okay it is plasma volume upon 1 minus hematocrit is your formula for total blood volume this is also asked this formula based on this you can get the calculation based on this as well okay now adding to this table of body fluid compartments and measurements first let's quickly revise this and then we will see the tricks to remember what is the major cation and what is the major anion in ecf interstitial fluid and all of that okay so first one total body water okay total body water is one ecf is one third icf is two third so icf is double 60 40 20 tie Plasma is one fourth of ECF, that is one twelfth of the total body water. Interstitial fluid is three fourth of ECF, that is basically one fourth of the total body water. This is what we had solved in the MCQs also. Okay. Now, what are the markers used to measure the volume? Water ke liye H2O, T2O wala ya D2O ya pani wala antipyrin. ECF ke liye sodium sulfate, inulin, mannitol, sucrose. Plasma is RISA, RISA basically is radio iodine, serum albumin and you have blue plasma TV. Interstitial and ICF are indirect, II are indirect, ECF minus plasma interstitial, total body water minus ECF is ICF. This is what we have learned so far in this session. Now the other things to be remembered, ECF and ICF okay what is the difference between the major cations and the major anions so the trick to remember here is for ECF that is the extracellular fluid remember extracellular means outside and remember NCC okay the NCC cadets are they stay outside right NCC stay outside so sodium chloride and bicarbonate okay this is what is in the ecf predominantly sodium chloride and bicarbonate the same thing you will see in plasma and interstitial fluid sodium chloride bicarbonate what is the major difference between the plasma and the interstitial fluid plasma within the blood vessel interstitial fluid outside so everything from the plasma goes into the interstitial fluid except the plasma proteins right the proteins cannot penetrate so remember interstitial fluid is very similar to plasma but minus the plasma protein so basically it is the ultra filtrate of the plasma okay it is ultra filtrate of plasma in your icf what are the major cations and anions in the icf so remember you must have heard this brand or the shop for ice cream that is called ikem ice cream ikem so inside is basically k and m that is potassium we have magnesium also which is present within the cells and we have organic phosphates and proteins okay organic phosphates and proteins right the atps adps amps atp present within the cell okay protein these are the anions within the cell okay that is within the icf okay so clear with everyone remember ncc is out okay ncc is out and you have in the cations potassium and magnesium which is within the cells organic phosphates within the cell okay organic phosphates within the cell all right so that brings us to the end of the session nf 100 episode 66 for today the body fluid compartments and the various ways to measure them i hope this topic has now become easy all right and i'll see you again tomorrow at 12 pm for the next three days as i said we will have kbmd sessions on the app free life classes unlocked using code dr nikita kbmds are con banega mds that are fun ways of learning with the mcqs mnemonics and concepts right so i'll see you at 12 pm and till then goodbye take care and keep studying keep revising and keep winning and good night everyone take a good rest and see you tomorrow at 12 pm thank you so much for joining in